Right, so this is going to be a quick video tutorial and maybe a bit of an opinion piece on using Vento and ISOs. One of my biggest uh, issues I have with YouTube reviewers when they do all the distro reviews is that they test the ISOs on virtual machines. And the problem I have with that is it will always work perfectly fine on a virtual machine and then you go ahead and download the distro and you try and install and you have endless grief. Whether it's with um, ButterFS reliability, or video card drivers, there's a whole host of things. So I'm not a big fan of testing on VirtualBox. I prefer testing on bare metal and that way I know things work perfectly fine. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to uh, install our uh, Ventway. First thing we do is we just, I don't want to make sure that it's not installed. So I use Pack UI and we have a look at Ventway. As you can see, nothing's installed. We go back here, let's go ahead and um, install Ventway. It's a Ventway binary. Select, done. Okay, I'm not too worried about that there. And we're all done. Go ahead, let's open up Ventoy. Now, the first thing that you'll notice about Ventoy is it does not support um, hard drives at the box. It first shows the USB devices. And what's nice about Ventoy is often you'll install other programs and there'll be a new update out for it. Your device will be out of date technically. Maybe there's new and better support for newer ISOs or different way of doing things, performance enhancements, etc. What's nice about Vento is it shows you what version is on your host computer and what version is on your USB flash drive. Sorry for the noise in the background, there's a jet flying over. But anyway, so this is very, very simple and if you have a difference in the version numbers here, you click update, it will update your flash device without you having to reinstall any ISOs or download or copy or do anything. It works beautifully. So by default, we are going to select this hard disk over here. As you can see, it's free and we're going to use that one. So the way we go about doing that, we say show all devices, click refresh over here. Um, you don't have to refresh, but... If you haven't formatted your drive and it doesn't take effect, then you want to click refresh. So we select our device, nothing's installed over here. We go ahead and we say install. Okay, perfect. Now, unfortunately, as you're going to see now, one of the issues with Ventoy is that it uses the entire disk. This defeats the whole point. We don't want to copy our ISOs on here with all other documents. And that's what a lot of people do is when they allocate a flash drive, or a hard drive to ISOs, they can't use the rest of the partition for their documents. Or they do, but then they end up using XFAT, which isn't exactly the most reliable for keeping your documents and files safe. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to go back to our Ventoy, and we're going to say here partition configuration. It's got an option to preserve free space at the end. We're going to just take a number here. Let's give it 100 gig should be 60 and we go ahead and we say install right done let's see if disks has refreshed now disks hasn't refreshed sometimes disks needs to be closed and reopened especially if the program was open while another program formats the drive um, it no longer becomes visible so we're just going to use KDE partition manager for right now And look at our device. We've got our first Ventor partition, and then we've got this unknown device over there. Right, I just wanted to say it is not necessarily a bug, but it's part of operating systems in general. Is sometimes if you do too many formats and then allocate partitions and then format and allocate partitions again, that you have to reboot for the changes to take effect. You'll have the same thing with Clonezilla, Windows, etc, etc. So I'm going to temporarily quickly reboot and I'll come back now. Alright, so we've booted up again and I'm just going to show you what the partition layout looks like. And as you can see here we've got our Vento partition, got a little EFI partition and then we've got all this free space which is great because now this free space I can use at the end here and I can format it with whatever I want. So obviously we're going to go with um, XFS and it will format and I can now use the space for whatever I want to do. If we go ahead and we look at Dolphin, as you can see in Dolphin it's already displayed our new partition. So this is our XFS partition that we've just created. We've also got this uh, removable device here which is our Ventoy flash drive 
and then now we've got Ventoy on the hard drive itself. So as you'll see, what we love about Dolphin is split panes. It's not the same thing as tabs. And we're going to select everything we've got on our flash drive and paste it over to our hard drive. And you can see the performance is pretty good. So while it's copying, the advantage of using a hard drive over a flash drive is that generally internal devices are significantly faster than flash drives and I don't know about you but my flash drive has often ended up in the pockets of my jeans and it's gone through the wash at least three or four times um, so at least I know it's got no viruses on it but um, it shows you how resilient and reliable they are but you whenever you need a flash drive you might struggle to find one so it's great having all your ISOs internally and if you want to test, if you want to use it as a recovery ISO, if you need to see it root into any of your distributions to fix anything, it's great having it on the hard drive. The other program which is similar to Ventoy, which allows you to put multiple ISOs on a drive, is Easy to Boot. I used Easy to Boot for many years and it works beautifully, but it's a little bit too complicated for what I need at this point. Um, what makes it great is you can have something like a Windows installation and you can put the serial number in and it will automate the installation which is great but for our purposes right now Ventoy is awesome you can't see it at this point it's um, off the screen but this is copying at about 100 meg a second off the flash drive onto the hard drive so like I said uh, flash drives are very quick the one I'm using is a Transcend uh, OTG flash drive I'll um, put a picture in here on the when I do the edit but why I like them is that it's got a Type C on the one side and a Type A on the other, so you can use it on a computer or on your cell phone, which is excellent. For me, a flash drive that doesn't have a Type C and Type A is kind of useless. I can only use it on PCs. So this is great because I can share ISOs with friends, I can share videos, I can share whatever I want using flash drives like that. <laughs> and the Transcend drive is USB 3 and one of the fastest drives I'm aware of. Right, so we've finished. That is just over 20 gig of ISOs that it's copied over one video, but that's my tools that I use for my machine. So let's go on to the next step. Right, next step is to have a look at our drives. You can see here our free space. We've obviously copied our ISOs onto here. These are 20 gig been reduced and um, we're sitting nice and empty on our XFS partition. That's another reason I love XFS. It's one of the most efficient file systems. If you want to copy a couple of hundred gigs onto a drive, you use EXT4 or even ButterFS. Granted, ButterFS does have compression, but XFS always has the most free space out of all the file systems I've tested, if no compression is enabled, obviously. Although another th nice thing about XFS that a lot of people aren't aware of, and this is once again where my little opinion piece comes in, is my beef with reviewers when they test on virtual machines is they don't really get a, a true feel for the performance of the underlying file system. They can format the virtual machine as XFS, as ButterFS, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's running on the host hard drive, which might be EXT4 or ButterFS. So they can't get a true feel for that distribution's file system choice. Whereas if you're testing on bare metal and you use something like XFS, you speak to most people who've used XFS, they'll tell you how they're able to play games while there's a big copy operation running in the background. Or they can continue to video edit without any stutters happening in the video editing while they're copying hundreds of gigs in the background. And that's what makes XFS so great from my personal opinion. I've used it for years over EXT4. Um, I've had recent issues with ButterFS, but I won't go too much into that. Anyways, I'm going to now quickly show you a uh, recording from the cell phone of me booting up from the hard drive. Right, before I reboot, I uh, just thought I'd cover it now quickly, and that is that someone asked me why I use a RAM drive on my machine. I use RAM drives because sometimes I might want to download a song, a video, ISO, and I don't particularly want to save it um, permanently. I just want to keep it in a temporary state. So RAM drives are excellent for not wearing out my SSDs, not wearing out my hard drives and um, I know when you're going to talk about wear and drives fine granted it's minimal but my point is this is that there's no fragmentation on my file systems now it's stuff that I don't intend to keep at least not yet so that's where a RAM drive is absolutely awesome and it helps when you've got a lot of RAM 
I've got 32 gig RAM on this machine. You can see it's got a RAM drive, 15 gig free. And these uh, video recordings before editing are being saved here. So if you want to see how we actually do that, um, let's just go ahead and you can see that there is the FS tab equivalent for my RAM drive. Let's just use this temporary file system. I mount it and I create this folder called RAM. It mounts it in there and it waits for the network to come online before it mounts this. At least that's the way it used to work. I'm not sure if it's changed. But the point being, RAM drives are awesome. If I want to save anything from Telegram, someone sends me a spreadsheet or a document, I just quickly save it here. I don't have to save it from Telegram. Save it in my RAM drive and I'm good to go. And the other nice thing is that whole temporary state means, I know I mentioned it doesn't wear out your devices, which is great, but when I reboot, it's gone. I don't have to do that admin of deleting all these temporary files. If I save it in my RAM drive, it's gone every time I reboot my machine. No maintenance required. Every computer is different. In my case, it's F11. On most computers, it's F10, 11, or 12. And you can enable it in the BIOS that says the show boot menu. So we're going to go ahead and we select the UFI OS on the hard drive. You can see there's the flash drive. If we go ahead and select this, and it pulls up all of our ISOs, which we can now boot. What's also pretty cool with Ventoy is it's got various tools in there, um, whether you want to fix Windows, if you want to do local boot, or it can even scan all your devices on your machine and you can boot straight into any one of your distributions from that there. Right, so in our case we're going to select zero. Okay, it's actually on my second screen. And that's just appeared, and you can see we're good to go.